video, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about using CabWriter to optimize your DXF files onto sheets of plywood and export those sheets and import them into Vectric software, in my case, Cut2D Pro. And then I'll show you how to toolpath those sheets. So I'm going to assume that you know a little bit about CNC and Vectric software for this video. And uh, give you a couple reasons as to why you want to do this. So why, why, my, why might you want to do this? Well, you can use the Vectric software to nest your sheets for you. However, they don't do label printing, and CabWriter does do label printing. And not only that, but the labels that get printed actually follow the parts on the sheet. So starting with sheet one, it would start down this lower left corner and follow the sheets up and across. So it's very easy to find the labels when you're uh, cutting parts. Um, it saves quite a bit of time. So um, it is nice to be able to print the labels in CabWriter and have the, uh, that ability to uh, follow the sheets. You can still print your labels even if you uh, use Vectric software to nest the parts. It's just that you'll be searching all over the place for the labels. The other reason why you might want to do it from within CabWriter is now we've added the ability to edit uh, the optimizations on the sheets. So for example, if I wanted to take this part and move it to this sheet, I can now do that by clicking on the part and it gets highlighted up here and clicking this button here for moving it. It's going to say what sheet do you want to move it to? And I'm going to move it to sheet 9 right below and I can put it in here and I pulled it off of this sheet and put it here. I can even add a new sheet if I need to and move parts around. You might want to do this if you're matching grain very carefully, um, in which case you want to be able to export these sheets and not re-nest them within uh, the Vectric software. So those are some of the reasons you might want to do it. So now let me uh, back up here and show you how to do this. So. You're going to uh, have your initial design, and when you're finished with that, you're going to have to create production documentation because that's the way that uh, we generate the DSX, DXF files for each of the parts that, in, that are in your project and then use them to do the optimization later. So that's why we want to have this checked here. Create DXF by material name and thickness plus, plus a cut list. So I'm going to create the reports. And chew on it for a second. And there we go. So they've been created. Then it immediately uh, puts me into the sheet optimization settings. The ones that I'm uh, really concerned about right now are the edge margin, that's how much uh, to put around the edge of the sheet, uh, so no parts can encroach more than 3 eighths inch from the edge of the sheet, and a clearance of an eighth of an inch. And what that is is uh, clearance between parts above and beyond the, the thickness of the bit that you're using, which is set in the settings on the CNC settings tab. In my case, it's 3 eighths of an inch for the bit size, clearance of an eighth of an inch, so you add those two together, you get a half of an inch, and that's how far the parts are going to be placed apart uh, on the optimized sheets. <clears throat> so if I say begin optimization, uh, these settings are for um, the saw optimization. And there I uh, can choose an, a nesting direction for cross-cut, ripped, or optimum. Um, and I can do the same for CNC. It doesn't make much sense. It doesn't make as much sense to do the optimum setting because it'll turn parts all over the place uh, for the table saw, but it does for the CNC because we're going for the most dense packing that we can get. I'm going to say begin optimization. This is the one for the saw. We don't want that right now, so if I close that, now we get the one we were just looking at for the uh, DXF parts. And you can see all the holes and all that good stuff that's in there. So, if I close this, and if I go to my hard drive and um, 
look in the project folder. There's another folder under the name of the project. And this is where I have a folder with the individual DXF folders, files. If I look in there in my three quarter inch maple plywood pre-finished, there's an individual DXF file for every part. I'm saying for the half inch. The integrated DXF files, this gives me one DXF file for, the, uh, for each sheet good type with all of the DXF uh, parts in that file, separated by a little bit. Um, those are the files that you can pull straight into the Vetrix software and have it nest for you. But what we want are the sheet folders. And let's look at the ones for pre-finished maple, three quarters of an inch. You'll see there's nine individual sheets one uh, DXF file for each sheet. In this DXF file, you're going to have what the picture that we saw for each of those sheets with all the parts placed on the sheet and then an outline of the uh, sheet itself. So I'm going to fire up uh, Cut2D Pro and this applies to any of the, the Vectric uh, products, uh, VCarve and uh, so on. But uh, for cabinet making, the Cut2D 2D Pro does everything that I need. All right, so I'm going to create a new file. And the job set up, single-sided, the width and the height of the sheet and the thickness of it. This needs to match the width and the height of the sheet that you set back in CabWriter for each of the um, different types of sheet goods that you have. We're going to deal with the three-quarter inch first. Uh, my zero position is off the machine bed and my XY datum starts in the lower left-hand corner. Obviously, you can do whatever settings work best for you there. Say OK. It gives me a sheet of that size, and normally I would pull in my vectors and place them on the sheet and, and uh, possibly even nest them. But again, I don't want to do that right now because I want to use the optimization that CabWriter created and then do the tool paths. So this process is going to take just a little bit more work than um, having a vector through the nesting. And I do have um, some other videos that show how to do the, uh, the nesting in Vectric that you, can, that you can view if you want to go that route. But if you want to do it this way, we'll keep on going here. So I'm going to use this import vectors from a file into the current job. And I'm going to go find my project folder and I'm going to go to where we just were the sheet folders and the three quarter inch and I'm going to start with sheet number one and you'll see that it pulls it in and conveniently uh, starts it in the lower left hand corner and puts everything on there the way it was as if it was already nested. One thing that we got to get rid of is the outer, um, there's a substrate layer here that CabWriter creates that puts the outline of the substrate or the outline of the sheet good. And we don't want to tool path that because it doesn't actually represent anything that we want to cut. So you can just not tool path it or you can delete it. I'm just going to delete it just to get it out of the way. So I'm right clicking on it, saying delete. Now we see that it's not there anymore but all the other vectors are. So I'm going to open the toolpath tab here and pin it open. Now, uh, I have another video on this as well, creating toolpath templates based on the layer names. Uh, you can encode within uh, CabWriter the information that you need on depth of holes and, and diameter of holes and, and uh, so on right into the layer name. And then we can create a toolpath template the keys off of those layer names and tool paths, everything on that layer properly. And like I said, there's another video uh, showing you how to do that, so I'm not going to cover it here. Um, I've already got a tool path template. You go under tool paths, templates, and say load template. I'm going to go find my tool path template folder. And I've got one for uh, ShopBot, which is what I normally use, 
uh, three quarters of an inch, uh, carcass parts, no pockets. I've got one for if I do have pockets. So when I pull that in, you can see that it has tool paths for system holes, construction holes, outside profile for small parts, and outside profile for large parts. Tool paths haven't been applied yet, though. So I can, uh, there's a little button here that says recalculate all tool paths. And when I do so, uh, it's calculating them. It's warning me that my uh, drill depth is a little uh, greater than my material thickness, which is what I want. And same with when I'm cutting my large parts. All right. So now we can see that all our tool paths have been created. So now I can save those tool paths. And I'm going to, all visible tool paths, notice they're all checked right now. All, all of them are going to be saved to one file, which is what I want in this case. And I'm going to say save tool paths. And I'm going to go back to my folder. You notice I created a folder in here called tool paths, and I'm going to put them in there. I'm just going to call this uh, 0.75 prefin maple uh, sheet one. I'm going to copy that name because I'll show you in a second why. I'm going to save that. And now I want to save the vCarve file or this, this file that includes my tool paths for the sheet as well. Um, and I'm going to put it in the same place. I'm in that same path. And I'm going to call it the same name, but I'm going to just put a TP after it for tool paths. It's going to have a .crv extension, so it differs from the other sheet. And oops. It somehow started a new sheet after that, but uh, hopefully prior to that. If I go back to my tool path folder. It did. So it saved the, the .crv file, and it saved the uh, shopbot file. And I can prove that to myself by opening the vcar file. And we can see that's uh, <coughs> what I ended with there. I'm not sure what I did there to, to block it out and create a new file, but that's exactly what I want to do right now uh, to do sheet number two. So then I would um, create a new file again and start all over. Import vectors. Um, but I would do for sheet number two. And I would repeat that entire process. Delete this outside. And uh, pull in my toolpath template again and so on. So again, it's a little bit more work than um, if uh, Vectric was doing the nesting, but actually, honestly, only a little bit more work because um, with version 10 of the uh, Vectric software, all the, all the different versions, they took away the super cool um, gadget that would apply your toolpath template to all the sheets at once. So you actually have to apply it sheet by sheet by sheet and save those off. So that's why I say it's only a little bit more work to do it this way. And again, now the advantage is the labels that I print within CabWriter will now uh, make it very easy for me to find the labels in order. And if I've done any um, special uh, moving around of parts within CabWriter, I can preserve that here. So you would just go through all your sheets, carefully name them and save them. And uh, usually actually what I do is I create uh, separate folders, one for the uh, ShopBot files and one for the the vcar files just so i can keep them separate and then i can cut parts so again um, there is a couple more videos one uh, that shows you how to create toolpath templates and the other one um, if you don't want to go this route um, we'll show you how to use uh, cut 2d pro to do the nesting and apply the toolpath templates um, and uh, you can consult uh, the, uh, the videos on CabWriter 4 to show you how to do this, the optimization. And um, 
the, uh, the new function in CabRider 5 to move parts around. There will be some videos out shortly for that, as well as the uh, release notes for CabRider 5. All right, thank you very much, and enjoy.